Hi, my name is Heath Clark and I'm the Melbourne Baker. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to make a very simple bread. The first recipe from my book, Homemade Bread Made Easy. It's really simple, it's delicious, and it looks really, really professional. Okay, so what you need is four ingredients. Flour, salt, yeast, and water. And I'm just gonna make it so easy. Yeast, just sprinkle it across the top. And then grab this, just mix it with your fingers. Look, just get the yeast in there. Salt, sprinkle that on as well. Mix that in there as well. Get your water. Just like that, move everything out of the way. You start to mix. All you do is just turn the bowl. You can turn it this way or that way, up to you. Just turn the bowl just like this. You don't need any flour on the bench when you pour it out. You're just getting it into a shaggy mass. Okay, really quick. And then you squeeze, you can squeeze like this. That helps a lot. Make sure you get all of it together. It seems kind of sticky in the beginning, but it, it, will, it will tighten up. The gluten will form. This is a bread flour. Bread flour is very important. If you use all-purpose flour, it doesn't have the, uh, the gluten content in there, so it's a little bit more difficult to work with. Just get that out there on the bench. Now, you're probably thinking I should have put flour down. That is a no-no. That throws the recipe out. Look, just scrape the excess out. Scraped it out, we're good, we're good there. Just get that off there. Okay, now look, very simply, slap it, fold it. Slap it, fold it. Another method I like to use is the pinch and fold. Pinch, 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 pinch. Pretty sticky at the moment. Pinch, pinch, fold it over itself, pinch, pinch. I look like a complete amateur right now, but you'll see in a couple of minutes, this will be a million bucks. Wait till you see it when it's finished baked. Whew. Man, showstopper. Making bread a little bit cooler than it really is. But bread is delicious. See how it's starting to come together? Don't worry about your hands, it will come off. You gotta have faith. Faith like a mustard seed. You see the gluten forming? Slap, fold it over. Slap, fold it over. Trapping the air underneath. Get that off your fingers, just like that. It'll come away. It's like the water just draws in all, sorry, the flour draws in all the water and then it balances out. So what you're gonna do is the gluten's gonna be strong and you have to fight it. Once you get to a point where it kind of weakens out and, and softens and becomes more elasticity, then you're done but it's gonna fight you all the way there, which is a good thing, because it saves going by time or anything like that at all. You just mix it until it's ready. All right, bear with me, folks. This is just a rough slap and fold at the moment, and then I'll start to really do it more precise as we the gluten starts to form. See, it's starting to come off my hands. A little bit of that, here we go. I might have to speed up the video a little bit. Jump forward a bit, if you get a bit bored. Now it's starting to form. It's a very soft dough, it's nice. Yeah. Smells so good. I really do love making bread. I do this every day, it's weird. It's not just for a show, I'm just documenting this. It was a commitment I made to myself to make a loaf of bread every day for a year. I've already done uh, five months now, every day. I love baking and I love cooking. It's just one of the things I love. And, uh, it's a real reward because I get to eat it and it's always better than the stuff you buy. You can never buy bread that's 
that good, unless you go to some specialist baker, you're not going to get it. It's up to you. Look at that, it's starting to form now, you can see. Starting to form up. Each time you get a uh, new flour, you have to adjust to the moisture content or the type of flour or the type of milling it is, because it's not always the same. It's a seasonal product. It may, it may grow all year, but we know that, but it changes from crop to crop. So you kind of got to work with it. I'm using the same measurements I used in the book. This one's a little bit wet, which is fine. More hydration, the better. The key to good baking is, is moisture. If you've got low moisture, it's a cookie. And we're not doing cookies today, we're doing bread. So you can see how it's starting to form. Look at that, see that there? Really starting to form. It's really nice. So what you wanna do is, as it rises, you wanna make sure it tra traps the gas. Right, if you just leave it like some lump, it's not gonna trap the gas properly. So what you wanna do is you, you kinda of wanna pre-shape it a little bit. See, I'm just folding it over itself. This could use more mixing. That's all right, I can do a little bit on the pre-shape, on the shape before thing. But there you go, look at that. Just like that, fold it over itself. Close the seam shut. Close the seam shut. Look, so easy. It really is, anyone can do it. It's four ingredients. Flour, salt, yeast, and water. That's it. I mean, a chimpanzee could make this. In fact, if I can find a chimpanzee, I'll get it to make it just to prove how easy it is. Okay, there it is like that. Just leave it out like so. Get your top and leave it on top until it doubles. The first rise is the most important. Let it really, really grow. And then you're gonna have great bread. Okay, thanks. Let's get back to it pretty soon. So we're back and we're gonna check the bread now and make sure it's doubled. Ooh. Very nice indeed. So it's still sticky and you might want to put some flour with it this time. I have flour over here, but I'm not going to use it as yet. I'm going to use my scraper. This scraper here is I bought from the construction section at the Home Depot. Just get underneath it like that. Because the gluten's formed, it wants to be together. It doesn't want to cause problems at this point. So you just get it off. Look, fold. Turn it around, see the bubbles? See those bubbles, look at them, oh yeah. And then you just fold again. Right, now what we're gonna do is the way I like to make the bread is I like to keep the gas inside because I want it to have like, a, like a, I don't know if you wanna say architectural type of structure inside, but it's more designed. It, it has like bigger holes and smaller holes. I don't want it to be generic, I want it to look pretty as well. So I just fold it a couple of times like this and what I'm doing is I'm doing a shape. I'm shaping the bread, and then I'm, while it's rising again, I'm gonna preheat the oven. So what I'm gonna do is this. First of all, I'm gonna flop it on its back. Then I'm gonna pull out the side and fold in on itself, and then go under here. Look at that. And I just wanted to do this without, without uh, flour because you don't really need it, but it will make it easier to work with. But people generally tend to dump a lot of flour onto the bench and it's a problem because it throws the recipe out, dries it out. But what you want to do is underneath, see how it's starting to pull apart? And this is where it's going to explode in the oven and cause problems. So you want to be nice and tight and even around the whole outside. Better be done right because I'm only making one today and if it doesn't look the way I said it would look, then yeah. I want to look like a bit of a fool. But anyway, look, just roll it in, fold it over, shut the seam. You've got to close that seam. Again, bring it back, shut that seam. Shut that seam. Okay? And then look, like this, perfect. Oh, I'm starting to get a bit of a split on the top, and there's a bubble there. But that's okay, because we want it to look kind of artistic, artesian. Okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get a little bit of flour here, right? And I'm just gonna go like this, look. It's not much at all. Just a little bit, okay? That's even too much. And then just roll them in again, 
Look at that. Making a nice tight top. Like that, look, see? I'm doing it backwards so you can see on the camera. And then this one here, again, roll her in. Oh, there we go. Like that. And then see this hole here? That'll explode out. So we've got to, we've got to cover that up. We've got to roll it into itself. Now, I don't mind this kind of stuff on top. See how it's broken a little bit? Because that will flare out. And then it'll make it look kind of artistic. And those little bits will get a little bit darker and a little bit more brown. So if we look at the bottom, see how it's all closed up? Oh, there's a little bit there. We've got to get more. Boom. Nice and plump. Look at that. That's beautiful. That's good. Okay, I'm happy with that. I might have to... I'm going to fold it again because I'm... Fold it over. Oop, turn it around. There we go. Seal that one. Seal that one. Make sure it's sealed. There we go. Now, you don't want to let this double before you put it in the oven. All right, you want it to be maybe 75% and let the extra 25% explode into the oven. Getting that oven spring. Okay, now a little trick that I like to do and I might mean this might be amateur, but I don't have time and I don't want to bum around. I'll sprinkle some, sorry, I'll move that out of the way so I'm center. I'll move that there like this and I'll sprinkle it half on my spatula, half on the thing there, and then place it like this. Then I put some on top, smooth it off. So we've got a nice little shape here, right? Look at that, okay? And then I'll cover it. But when you bake it, right, and you put it first in the oven, you want to whack this on top. Or you can spray water into the oven to get a good oven spring. It needs to have moisture in there. If it doesn't have moisture, the gluten will, will cook very quickly and tighten and not allow any spring. By having this on top, it'll allow the moisture to stay inside and grow for longer. Sometimes I leave this for 40 minutes or 35 minutes, depending on the size I want. But this is, this is what you need to use. So in this case, I'm going to put the bowl back on top. I'm going to let it rise 75% bigger. And then I'm going to preheat the oven behind me at 525 degrees. I like to do it hot. I like the outside really crispy. And I'm going to bake it so it's dark, dark brown. Right? So I'm going to do that off video. And then I'm going to come back and you're going to see the bread. And then I'll let it cool for a little bit. And then I'll cut it and you can see inside. Okay? So now it's risen. It's got 75% bigger, which is where I want it to be. You can see the air bubbles in there. If the bubbles are too big like this, just break them. You don't want them because they, they'll just burst open. But it's okay to have a little bit. Oh, look, they're everywhere. That's, that's a good sign for me anyway. Now look, I've got this little razor blade here and that's what I'm going to score the top of the bread with. Simply like this. I like to do it this way. One, two three that should be good maybe i'll chuck one around the face here so i can get the extra rise and join it up there there we go okay now to put it in the oven let's see how it goes okay the bread's all finished now and i baked it to what i generally like which is like a crispiness on it listen you hear that listen listen oh my god all right, that's what, I, that's what I generally like. I had an explosion here, so I didn't fold that right. So I'm going to admit my own mistakes. But we're going to break it open right in front of you now to see if I got the crumb right. But I like to, to bake it dark. It's not so hollow now because I've been letting it cool down for about 30 minutes. I baked it for 40 minutes, this one. So we're going to open it up. Let's see. Make sure you can get a little look in the camera there. All right, here we go. terrible cut look at that oh, it smells amazing it really does anyway let's do the taste test it's delicious 
So what you want is you want that nice kind of open crumb. It's still a bit hot now. And what you want to do is you want to let it cool down fully before opening it. I know many people don't, but that doesn't matter. As long as you've got a nice crispy outside and then you get a bit of butter out of my little butter container here. All right. There you go, just like that. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you subscribe. I hope you check out my book and happy baking. Oh man, I'm going to eat this whole thing. I'm not lying. I eat this whole thing. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.